Hey everybody, this is Josh Rhodes. We're coming back to another JDR RC blog. And as I've promised, this video is all about my Bigfoot 4 regulator truck that has won so much this year. Probably the winningest truck I've ever had or built in my stable. I know a lot of people look at retro and they go, oh, it's slow, it's this, it's that. Retro means a lot to me for a couple of reasons. I grew up an old school monster truck racing fan. If you don't believe me, this is me riding in a Bigfoot Power Wheels in the year 1991. So yeah, I've been around a while as far as uh, old school monster truck racing goes. I was, I was uh, let's see, I think I was four years old when the Bigfoot 8 banning happened in 1990. But even as a four-year-old, I was stomping my feet going, you can't, I can't believe it, Bigfoot got banned. <laughs> Uh, I host a podcast called the Retro Monster Truck Review, as I stated in the last video, if you ever want to go ahead and check that out. Myself and Matt Stoltz do a pretty good job, I think, of covering old school monster truck racing. But my point here is, I love the retro class because it is exactly what I grew up with. It's old school monster trucks. Alright, so as you guys can see, I've moved outside here. I'm out on my back porch. And I just got uh, every single trophy that this truck has won as my dog is also inside the house. Not very happy that daddy's out here. So if you hear a little whining, that's her. She's just, she's a, a separation anxiety. <laughs> but uh, here you can see all four trophies that I have won uh, as far as winning racing brackets for Trigger King. As well as the Children's Outlaw Retro Series Championship down here. Then we have this year's championship trophies the points championship for trigger king as well as the bigfoot open house let you guys read these october of last year march may and june of this year 2021 racing champion in retro bigfoot open house winner and there is the childress winter series from right at the beginning of this year so now you guys are probably wondering <laughs> My dog does not like it when I'm talking. I swear. You listen to her. Listen to her. She's over here. I'll pan the camera over there. Boomer. What is wrong? She can't get to daddy. That's what it is. Say hi to everybody. Boomer. Hey. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hi, hi, hi. Anyway. <laughs> what is so special about this uh, basically stock appearing Claude Buster truck? Well, we're going to get right into it. As soon as I get the body off, we'll show you. All right, so I've propped the truck up here, and I'm going to turn the light on on my camera. And I want to point out the first thing that you will see. I've got down here, this is a stock to my Clodbuster chassis. First thing you're going to notice in the regulator is there is nothing here preventing suspension travel. There is nothing there. The stock to my Clodbuster chassis is going to block your suspension travel if you put an oil-filled shock on or anything. And the top of your gear case is going to slam right here. You had, Honestly, and I, I've had these chassis before, uh, and I have had to cut and mutilate these things just to make them work. Uh, the chassis that I currently have on my Grandma Gravedigger truck, which is one that I built just to kind of mess around with. Y'all have seen it go through the mud in uh, Tony CC's video from Horizon Hobby RC Fest. Uh, another thing that I, I forgot to mention, this truck actually won Horizon Hobby RC Fest as well, Bigfoot. But anyway, um, this right here, you can see there is uh, some, there's some plastic in the way. So with these chassis, you got to go in and cut all the way around here, all the way down here. All, all of this needs cut. Not to mention that with these chassis, you also have to have a vertical servo setup, which you don't really need anymore. You could technically get the J Concepts, uh, the steering, which is the BTA steering, and it would work just as good. The problem is you're still going to have something hitting up here. Uh, with me, with the vertical servo setups, I've had to cut out a portion of this part of the chassis just to be able to make the suspension travel up and down evenly uh, and that is probably as part of the reason why i've gotten away from running the stock chassis and just went to this because it saves you so much time because right out of the box you don't have to worry about any of that this is another aftermarket retro chassis that i've had before it's a company called sicken me that makes this chassis one thing that I loved about this chassis was I was able to point and pivot and shoot out of corners any which way that I really wanted to with this chassis. The issue that I had was is 
it's just it weighs a little too much and the weight is not really evenly distributed throughout the whole chassis uh, at least I felt so anyway. The same issue that I had with the uh, the stock clawed chassis is with this chassis. All of these holes that he's got in here, this bar right here and this up here would get into my gear case. And you can see where the gear case would hit every single time because of the black paint that's on the chassis getting rubbed away right here. And you can see it on the rear as well uh, where the gear case would hit. Uh, I never really wanted to get in here and cut this thing up. I mean, it, it never really appealed to me to want to cut this whole chassis up just for this simple purpose of trying to get a little bit more suspension travel. So I went with a shorter shock on this truck. Uh, I didn't have very much suspension travel at all, but I was hitting the top of the chassis still even with a shorter shock, which was the Proline Power Stroke really short uh, front uh, slash shocks that was all the way around on this truck. This chassis did win uh, a couple of championships in Trigger King. It won the Winter Series when we were running a Winter Series. It won Bigfoot Open House in 2019. Uh, kind of a fluke win compared to this year's win with Bigfoot Open House. Uh, and it won the Summer Championship as well before some uh, big changes started to hit the retro scene. And when the big, big changes started to hit the retro scene is when this truck and this chassis kind of fell to the wayside. Now we're going to get into what makes the regulators so different. Like I said earlier, first thing you're going to notice, nothing here to prevent suspension travel. Nothing back here preventing suspension travel. Your truck has full suspension travel and you're not banging into anything uh, up top. One of the things that really sets the regulator chassis apart from anything else uh, is the steering kit that you can purchase separately for it. And you could technically use this on a stock claw buster if you'd like. Uh, but up until this point in the history of RC monster truck racing, as far as the claw buster goes, there's never been, to my knowledge, a servo that was mounted quite like this one is. There is a mount that attaches to the bottom of a stock uh, brace that holds your servo in place behind the axle of the truck. Now, there are behind the axle claw buster steering kits out there. However, not for a stock clodbuster. This is for a completely stock clodbuster. So you can use the upper, or the, excuse me, the lower suspension arms and mount this, ch mount this onto your chassis any which way that you would like. And it gives you quite a bit of throw, as you can see. One thing that I have done, uh, J Concepts has these available. You can get them through the J Concepts Shapeway store, and that is these suspension arms as well as a gear case. An axle tube set, which is, this is the gear case, obviously. You can get suspension arms, you can get an axle tube, and you can get different knuckles that they have available through their Shapeway store. Or you can do what I've done here, and that's just take your stock arms and shave them down to give yourself a little bit more throw. As you can see, I've shaved these down here as well, these uh, suspension braces down here on the bottom of the chassis, which I need to color back in just a little bit with some Sharpie <laughs> so they don't look as as uh, red as the stock is. Um, so I shave these down. As you can see, I shave them down quite a bit. I also shave the inside of the knuckle uh, to just try and get as much steering throw as you possibly can. And this truck has quite a bit of steering throw. Inside the chassis here, we have Axial 27 turn motors, which are going to change next season for Trigger King. They will be a J Concepts 27 turn motor that has to go in the truck. Trigger King is mandating the use of the J Concepts motors, and they're going to put a serial number stamp on each set of motors for each truck. You're allowed to buy, I think, five motors, which is two per truck and one spare, uh, if I remember correctly. But for now, these Axial 27 turn motors that I have in here are what's been powering this truck and what's been powering it to a lot of wins. Uh, we will be swapping over to the J Concepts motors as soon as Trigger King gets those motors in stock for us to purchase directly from the club. One of the things that I have done differently and I have always done differently with my trucks as far as retro goes is there are no foams in these tires. These are J Concepts gold compound tires. They are golden year tires or as you can see on the side gold year tires. You can call it golden year, you can call it gold year. Me personally, I'll stick with gold year. But uh, one thing I do is I take and drill a 5 8 hole in the back of the tribute rim. There are two breather holes back there. They are very small. You drill those out to about 5 eighths of an inch and you get 
this. That adds and gives you more suspension than what you would normally have in your in your uh, cloud buster there are guys out there and, and you there's no wrong way to do this you can run foams if you would like you can run the blue compounds with foams you can run them with closed cell foams but the gold compound themselves are strong enough to support the truck without foams in the tires so you can have this much suspension travel the compound itself is not really designed for dirt however it has worked flawlessly on dirt for me the entire time that I have used these tires and rim combination. The other thing that I use on my trucks that might be a little different than what everybody else uses, these are G-Made shocks. I believe they are aeration shocks. I could be wrong. I'll have a link to these down in the description below for you guys to check out. But these shocks are really awesome. They come with a complete set of instructions on how to build a low pressure or a high pressure setup. I've built a low pressure setup with Team Losi 30 weight oil in all the shocks around on this truck. And as you can see, I've messed with the suspension, got it set up to where it's not too loose, not too tight. It's kind of a happy medium and the truck does have quite a bit of articulation either way, but that just helps it turn better, honestly. These shocks are some of the best shocks that I've ever really purchased as far as uh, an RC monster truck goes period you can use these on this truck or this chassis and you can use these on uh, your sport modifieds your pro modifieds they're a good shock to get the only issue that you would have though is if you're going to go freestyle that truck these are a great race shock I should specify that a great race shock if you're going to go freestyle this truck there is one slight little issue this is an aluminum body and a plastic head up here so you do run the risk of pulling the threads out of this plastic head up here if you run them on a vehicle that is extremely quick like a modified Clodbuster or a low C LMT or something like that axial SMT10 uh, G-Made does make other shocks with an aluminum uh, shock cap as well so you can look into some other G-Made options if you would like they make them in different sizes 90 110 90 millimeter 110 millimeter and I think uh, there's one more size that they make I can't remember off the top of my head but they do they have a, a wide variety of shocks they also have piggyback shocks that you can get as well uh, like I said probably the best upgrade that I made on this truck was these shocks they work very very well now, earlier I had mentioned that we don't have anything up here as far as to block your suspension. We don't have anything back here to block your suspension. So where's all the weight at in this chassis? Well, in the regulator, it is dead center, direct center here. We've got a Hobbywing 880 speed control right here, which I had to come up with a creative way to mount it. This truck only races. It doesn't freestyle. It does not get bashed. So I didn't see a problem with mounting it a little sideways in the chassis like I have right here. J Concepts has a sponsor panel that you can uh, kind of put into the side of your regular chassis here, which I have done. I have put that there, and I've two-way taped the speed controller onto the inside of this sponsor panel, which is also two-way taped into the chassis itself. Never had an issue with it. It's never came loose. It's never done anything. This Hobbywing 880 has been a flawless speed control. Uh, and haven't really done anything to it. This is still virtually stock. Haven't haven't programmed it. Haven't done anything to it. Truck runs great. Uh, on the inside here, we've got a shorty pack battery, as you can see, which this battery is going to change soon. I need to get a Spectrum battery in here as soon as possible. Uh, this battery has seen better days, <laughs> but it's working. It still works. It still works very well. We'll put it that way. And underneath of that is something that you're not going to be really able to see unfortunately you can actually you can see it really good right here uh j concepts has a brass weight that you can per that comes with this chassis uh i was about to say you could purchase separately but no this actually does come with the chassis and it's molded to the bottom and uh your cross brace that you have down here actually slides right onto it uh, it adds a ton of weight there are guys out there that don't use it. There are guys out there that do use it. I use it because our series has a nine pound weight limit rule. And uh, everything you see here, these are all sticky weights on the bottom of this that I have here. And that's because it, uh, with, with this weight that you have in here on our scale, I think it came out to 8.5 pounds. So I've had to add a ton of weight here in the center to uh, meet our nine pound weight limit. 
I do run two separate bodies on this truck. Uh, the last couple of events that I've ran, I ran this body right here, which is a J Concepts 89 Ford F250, uh, which was painted by Easy Customs over in Florida. If I remember correctly, I think that's where Eric's from, but in Florida. So if you have a body that you would like painted by Eric to match a certain monster truck, or if you want a buggy paint job or anything like that, he does incredible airbrush work. Uh, this body is about three years old now it's seen some better days <laughs> i probably need to upgrade soon but uh i was just extremely happy with this this body was based after 1988 minneapolis if you ever want to go back and watch the ushra event from 1988 i covered it on my podcast not too long ago but when i was a kid that was the tape that got wore out in my vhs uh vcr quite a bit it was minneapolis 88 watching bigfoot go out and take the win this body is modeled after that body uh, and I actually have some of these chrome planets or, or these inserts uh, I actually have painted a chrome to kind of match this body but it also works with the black so uh, I've just left the black in for now but yeah like I said this is probably my favorite body to run on the truck the old school Bigfoot blue you can never go wrong with all right, had to make a detour and run into my computer room for a second, but I wanted to grab a few things. This body is what everybody saw on Trigger King this season. If you were watching the Trigger King RC YouTube channel, you saw this truck in retro running this body, which is an old racer stripe body. And a lot of people wanted to say, oh, John Pyant, you're running the John Pyant paint scheme, the Bigfoot Ford John Pyant. Nope, I am not. Oh, I'm a little out of breath, sorry. <laughs> I had to run into the computer room real fast to get these photos. But this is 1990 in Pena, Illinois. Maybe 91, honestly. I don't remember off the top of my head the exact year. But that's Bigfoot 4 sporting the Racer Stripe paint scheme. And at that particular show was Jim Cramer behind the wheel. So this was a Jim Cramer Bigfoot paint scheme from number 4 right here. Uh, and I know my mom's going to love this photo, but we're going to put this out there as well. It's little me and my mother standing underneath Bigfoot 4 when it was in town at a car dealership that no longer exists in Pena, Illinois. But I could point out exactly where this truck was sitting uh, back in the day. Um, this body was done after that body right there. Uh, and I, I absolutely love the way that this body came out. And the fact that I won a championship with this body just, I don't know, it makes me feel pretty good. The, something from my childhood got ran in this season of Trigger King. And just, it, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, guys. I really don't. It just, it made me feel really good that I could take something that has meant something to me for so long, take it out, and win a championship with it. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the JDR RC Blog. Uh, I want to say real quick, right at the end here, a couple of things. Thank you to my sponsors, Horizon Hobby, Spectrum RC, uh, J Concepts, obviously. J Concepts does amazing and phenomenal things for the Solid Axle Monster Truck community. Check out everything that they have on their Monster Truck page, and you can see everything that they have put into this. Special thanks to Jason Rona and Fred Reap for that. They give us what we have so we can have such awesome performing vehicles out there. So... Thank you to J Concepts. Also, thank you to JB Scale Graphics. John Arnold has stuck with me since he got started in this hobby. He credits me for getting him into it. I credit him for keeping my stuff look good the last few years. JB Scale Graphics, check them out, jbscalegraphics.com. John can do custom flags for you. He also has the license to produce every, every decal you saw today on my Bigfoot trucks. John has the license to produce those. He has them in stock over on his website. Uh, he might have, uh, there might be a few that aren't in stock right now, but I know that there are still quite a bit of Bigfoot decals over there that you can get at this moment in time at the release of this video. He also has Overkill Evolution, Bad Habit. Uh, he's working on a few other deals out there too. I can't say in this video, but I'm looking forward to seeing the finished products of, but anyway, look all those up. Um, like I said, ending this video off and you're going to see a few passes that this truck has made in Trigger King this year, as well as... Uh, the final round from Bigfoot Open House. I'm going to close the video out with that. Uh, if you guys would like to see it. Head over to the Trigger King RC YouTube page. To see these brackets. And see these runs in their entirety. In high definition. If you would like. 
but like I said, right now at the end of this video, just going to play a few clips of this truck in action so you can kind of see exactly what it's all about. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. And always remember, keep the rubber side down and the shiny side up. Ready? Yep. Watch the light.